So I'm cutting some of these hydrangea heads. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry them as best we can. We don't mind if they look a little papery and dull. And then we're gonna use them in our Christmas table decorations. Let me get one more and then we will get started today. What we thought we would do today, it's here in November, cold, rainy, just actually stopped raining. We need to get our dahlias taken in. The frost has really done a number on those. Uh, we also thought we'd give you a little tour of what isn't growing. <laughs> Usually we say what is growing, uh, what isn't growing. What the garden looks like now here in November, Lars has COVID. So if you hear him coughing back there behind the camera, just, just move on. Then it's uh, just me. Yeah. yeah, he's doing well though, but he does have COVID. So he's actually home today from work um, at the garden. So that just worked out so he can help me um, take care of this. Let me get one more of these and then we will get started. So this, these hydrangeas- all of them though. No, you're, you're, you're right. But these hydrangeas, you'll notice that they just don't have so many flowers this year. These would be pretty, I think dry these. Um, they just don't have so many flowers this year and the reason is we told you that we took down this building. There was a building behind us. So these are all sort of newly established. We had to move a bunch around this year. We bought some at a end of season sale, the little tiny ones there. The other ones we cut down last year really low to sort of match the others. So um, It'll look better next year because we're not going to do any more than just a little deadheading, if you will, for now. So hopefully we'll have a bit more flowers to show off next year. Ooh, that'd be nice too. Okay, let me put these up here. But then... also to say all these new um, sprouts or the new greens here, they will all have new flowers next year though. Exactly, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, other things to look forward to here in the the autumn, things that we need to get started on, leaves. We've oh, actually Lord. looked at, we've looked at buying a leaf sucker. <laughs> I only know a leaf blower. There's such a thing as a leaf sucker. Um, we never had to worry about it because when this was grass, we just got out here with a rake and raked up the leaves. It wasn't a big deal, but we found a leaf sucker. So we're going to suck up all the leaves. Don't look up there. There's a bunch of <laughs> Now I have to. It's like a kid. Right. You tell don't look, then we look. look yeah. yeah. So a bunch of leaves, um, pines from the tree back there behind us. But this wisteria is going to lose all of its leaves here pretty soon. The ivy, of course, is evergreen. So that's nice. And it's doing really well. It's growing like it should be. And the goal is that it really covers the whole wall. That really is going to... You know, when we first moved in, Fun story, skip ahead if you don't want to hear it. But when we first moved in, there was a dead, you can see here, see this bulge? There was this tree, like half of a dead carcass of a tree, fossil of a tree. Pear tree. Yeah, it used to be a pear tree. The neighbors over there, they tell us that it used to be a pear tree. We hated it. To me, I grew up in South Georgia where when I see something like that, I just think it's going to be full of rattlesnakes or rats. So really, really freaked me out for quite a while. Um, and we decided when we moved in just to get rid of it. So we got rid of it. We still have a big bulge here because it was just too, too invested in the ground. This is also sort of where the ivy begins. But since then, we've taken the ivy and we've run it across here. We keep sort of tacking it up and nailing it up to help it grow. It does connect on its own. You can see these have naturally connected. Some of these are sort of naturally grown on the wall, but a lot of it doesn't, so we have to kind of help it. And we do take them, then when they come up too yeah. high, we kind of trim it back there. Because the neighbor over there, really nice neighbors behind us, all of our neighbors are really nice, but uh, we don't want the ivy to sort of go into their yard and attack them. The same thing for this fence, we're, we're trying to train the ivy to keep crawling over this fence, because again, when we moved in, this ivy really wasn't taken care of and this fence was practically laying down. So we had to come in, redig the footers and everything. That's and why uh, there's also no ivy on the side because there was that little sh weird shit here. Yeah. And this fence was a mess. So this is actually what's under this whole hedge of ivy. So super great. So this, oh, these are really pretty. Maybe I will cut some yeah. more. We only have one table for Christmas. And we're not actually hosting this year. We're going to your mom's, which is great. But since we're not hosting, 
um, the table decorations don't have to be as intense. So let's get started on the tour. Okay. You can see our little flower pots are finished. Our impatience, yeah, they're done. We're going to take Ooh, these yeah, out. Yeah, that those. sedum too. We've had some frost here. Um, this doesn't go though, the sedum, we just uh, let it be. Yeah, 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 the sedum doesn't go. Yeah. But still, we've had some frost, so we've got a bit of, even the, the butterfly candy here, the frost is sort of nipping off these. That one's yeah. still looking okay though. The dahlias that we're going to have to take in today. Oh, and we forgot, sorry, that this is the butterfly candy, that low variety, so we hope that'll do well there. Not but getting too low. I, I just said butterfly candy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Lars. Blame it on COVID. I got COVID. I don't use the good. Um, you can see that oh, our dahlias, wow. our dahlias are pretty much done. We like I said, we've had we've had one or two really good frost. Nothing super major, you know. So they're not totally black. They're not not really that bad. But they're time to go. We could leave them for another week, so those tubers can really develop the eyes, get that nice tough skin. But we need the space for the things in the glass house. So they're going to go today. Um, here's the rest of the stuff that we've cut down. Yeah, there were so many pretty things. Go back and watch other videos. We had, we had a pretty garden. And Lars and I were talking. The garden feels really small. Does it feel small to y'all as well? It feels a lot smaller without all the plants in it, which I guess just happens. Um, you can really see our nine bark now. That's quite pretty. Now that the other stuff around it what all was over here, Lars? We had some Rubecchia. It what looks else? empty, yeah. Yeah, it looks really empty, but this was a little hidden oh, as, yeah, it, as it grows cool. up. The Agastasia is still nice. It's pretty though. It's a pretty one. And that it has so many different yeah, changes in its life, like has white flowers and red berries. Yeah, yeah it's nice. a lot of change. Your, the monk's hood is still doing really well. I won't dare touch it without gloves for fear of death. But it's doing okay. Again, the cold, it's pretty much finishing these guys. But you know what I see? I what? see seeds. Oh, heavens. There are a lot of seeds in there. Look at that. If I had on gloves, I'd grab them. Or if we Wait. weren't filming, I'd grab them. Grab. No, I just want to show. No, they're not ready Don't yet. Don't get close to me. You have COVID. I'm unmasked. Yeah. But they have to be all brown before they're ready. I'll move away again. We're outside, so you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, we won't talk much about COVID, but uh, here in Denmark, even staying home from work, it's, it's quite, the country's done really well. So thank you, Denmark, for all of your efforts um, through COVID. That's all I'll say. I know it can be quite controversial to some people. The Flomus, I want to show this real quick. We've talked about it a lot, about leaving it, but look at it. Look how it's really, really pretty. Did you get all these seeds? You didn't, did you? No. No, I did not actually. You can hear them in there. But they also, because this year we wanted to leave like some. We're at a Spanish dance party. Because they are very sculptural, right? Yeah. Imagine if I go on the other side here, just the view from here. If you, you step to the left, <laughs> just if you go out of the picture. The view. Just imagine the view. No, but if you imagine like those with some snow on it. You but took yeah, you a can really nice picture for your Instagram, actually. Remember that one with the sun coming in the other day? Yeah. One of those yeah. sunny days. That was really pretty. Yeah. You'll notice as well, we have some pumpkin visitors. Pumpkin visitors. Oh, and we have a lot of, if you've seen recently, we've been planting bulbs. So for the first time in our garden, you will see patches of dirt. Ta-da! We plant crazy close together. But that's one reason why we had to cut down a lot I mean, things like the ferns are just naturally dying back, but a lot of things we cut back so we could bring in a lot more um, bulbs and things. That's what all these empty spots are doing. We put our Halloween pumpkins out here. Just let them go to compost. And this year we cut them from the bottom. Ooh. That was a great tip, actually. Because yeah. then it doesn't really rot so fast. Oh, it is. Okay. That's Trigger crazy. warning. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this was our first year. I don't know if that's a, a great tip if anybody's looking. Usually we've cut our jack-o'-lanterns from the top and then the head, the head, I guess it's the head, just uh, shrinks and then falls in and just makes a mess. But this year we cut them from the bottom, put them on top of a candle. Ta-da! Oh, the, did you see? I see a geranium still flowering here. 
See that? Oh, oh that's pretty with that. Let me go yeah, close. Man. There's even raindrops on it. Mm. Surprise, because there's a lot of rain here in Denmark. <laughs> what else do we got? The rhododendron. See this, this butterfly candy. This was the pink one, right? Yeah. Yeah. This one's pretty and now finished. I, I heard you talked about that, so I won't repeat myself. No, I didn't talk about this specific no. one yet. And look at the buds on the azaleas here, ready for... And these actually we trimmed back, remember, when we first moved in? Yeah, and we moved. There were two, oh, there yeah, were we three moved. or four. Yeah. There were three or four huge rhododendron here. We, we put two of them up on Facebook Marketplace for somebody to just come and get. And the other one we planted there, because yeah. while we like rhododendron, they can get really big and then, yeah. We also have some at work that's really... Oh, those are pretty. Good. Some we'll of them are pretty. Yeah, really. No, they're pretty. Okay, now we're going to argue. You and... No, but some of them are leggy. I mean, they, yeah, we have some really big, nice ones, but if they're in the wrong position, I think they... But they you've don't. also mentioned that some of the other gardeners wanted to cut them back, like yeah. get rid of them. And I, I'm going to start a petition that <laughs> oh. is... Okay, you save, go. Save the rhododendron. This, though, you wanted to cut this back earlier, but look at this, this Verbena Bampton. Look how pretty it still is. And seeds again. Okay, granted, it, it's lost its color, obviously, yeah. but look at... Oh, goodness, you're going to go crazy. Yeah. You only have to be home one more day, so... Uh, <laughs> but that's really pretty. Says who? Mm. The Nefofia, look at that, that's still doing nicely. Oh, yeah. This was one of those after or end of summer sales. We brought it, we, we stuck it in, and it has just oh, done that color. so well. Yeah. What's not done very well, oh, the Lupina are coming, Lars. You can see those again. Well, who's not done well is this guy. Look at this pumpkin. Ooh. He's fallen down. Oh no, is he on? Oh yeah. He's making a wonderful home for creatures. Yeah, but good the lupins are coming there, Lolopina. Oh we also as we were oh, yeah. as we were trimming, we, we would love this to be is it called variegated where it looks like a tree? I'm asking the non English speaker. Yeah. Uh, I'm just nodding. I'll yeah. look at the camera then. Um yeah, so what we would love is if it looked more tree like. We know it's a bush because it's even called butterfly bush. But if it had like a stalk stem, well, that would be really pretty, so. And the same with the other one in the back, yeah. With our good old broomstick. Oh, and here's another pumpkin. This one was cute, yeah. yeah. Ooh. He's doing well. He's cute. <laughs> Look at that little thing. Ooh, yeah, lots of critters in there. So that'll be fun to watch. Here in the front, though, I wanted to show this wallflower that is loving. <coughs> Hope you got your boosters. Oh. So uh, this wallflower is doing super well. Look at it. It's not even trying to go anywhere. It is loving its life. So nice. But what's not doing so well is my toad lily. Look not, at that. Uh -huh. I mean, it still has its tiny, tiny flowers, but the cold is, it's getting it. So, let me see that. That one has nice though. Wow. Yeah. That is I pretty, right? I can get it though. Uh -huh. That's See, it's nice. hard to be behind the camera, right? Yeah. The eucalyptus is still doing well. The fig is not. It's tall now, yeah. Well, the fig is doing what it's supposed to do. And yeah, this has gotten really tall. Oh, and maybe we, t we tell them about here. Please. The. Um, I will point. What do you want to talk about? Point. Over here, that one is called Piris. Yeah, sorry. I have the Danish names. But these are kind of, we... we we had some perennials and some summer flowers. And now we kind of put some decorated the pots for winter. We have some uh, Helleborus, Yule Rose in Danish, which is rose. Pretty. And we have some, you know, this one, the Lung here. Yeah. That's really pretty. So we kind of decorate and some Skimia, we will add some into um, that we also use for the decorations outside for the <gasps> flower boxes. Yeah. I thought we had it in here. No, that was just to show how the flower looked like. Oh, that was to get me to sign off on it? <laughs> yeah. I think you're going to like it, yeah. We're not big on changing out our pots because, I mean, we've even called our channel and the Instagram Perennial Garden, that's our website, because we like perennials. So we're not really big on changing the pots all the time. But Lars decided to surprise us 
and change out the pots. It's always when I go to the supermarket, I don't know why yeah. I find flowers. But there's also bulbs in there for spring, so yeah. that's going to be really nice. Yeah, and then our other pots full of bulbs are over there. The hostas, we've cut those back as well. This wisteria is also about to, about to lose its color. It's nice, though. It has a little bit of that autumn color. Still, uh, yeah. And it's really grown a lot, so I can't wait for next year. Ooh, yeah. And we've told you guys before that this is this skeleton under here, I, we probably have. So fast forward if you've heard this story before. Under here is an old grapevine. This skeleton is an old grapevine that was here and it made the tartest white grapes. They weren't that great. The, the lady who lived here before us, she was an elderly lady and she would actually make wine. When we bought the house, I tried and just really wasn't my favorite. We tried to make some on. Um, Chutney out of the grapes, remember that, Lars? Oh, yeah. not good. We're not chutney makers. Jam, it just took too much sugar, so we, we, we cut it, just kept the skeleton, and then planted the wisteria because we like the flowers. They're so fragrant. They smell really great. Um, and then we get this full coverage on this wall to our neighbor over there. So, lavender we've cut back. Yeah, we need to put this, our sort of summer outdoor oh. furniture, that needs to go under the shed. Yeah, so this is the garden. It looks a lot smaller, right? Mm. Jeepers, creepers. But what we're thinking is this, is this is as much as we're cutting back this year. Um, the dahlias are sort of the last thing to go. And then we can move some things out of the glass house and put them in those high beds. So we have a bit more space in the glass house. Take a few of the last seeds and then and I think that's pretty much the garden for November, right? I think so. Mm. In that case, let's grab some gloves, some shears, a shovel and let's get And label so we can name the dahlias. You have them labeled under, we're discussing Yeah, them. yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's do. So before we get started on the dahlias, I just wanted to let you know that if you have seen or see in the background, there's a burned building in the back. Uh, just to let you know, they are our neighbors, very nice people. A few months ago. In August. In August. There, that whole building caught on fire. It was really quite serious. The fire truck, 10 fire trucks <coughs> were on our little tiny street. Really super intense. Thank the Lord that the wind was blowing towards the ocean and not over because all of our houses are connected. Fortunately, just so you know, no one was injured. Um, in, in that room, they have, there's like an office space. There's, a, there's a, like a work shed type of thing. So no one was hurt. But if you do see that in the background and, and ask about it, uh, now you know what it is. So... Back to the dahlias, which are also a little... Little side story. A little, yeah. <laughs> Lots of free stories today. Uh, we're going to start with these cabana bananas, and we're going to take our dahlias down in groups. That way we know what they are. They do have tiny labels um, under them, but I don't know if they're all pointing exactly where they should point at this stage. Or, or if a snail moved the tag or something. Some, I'm a kindergarten teacher, so... We got some strong, some turbo snails. So we're going to start by cutting these guys down um, and then go from there. Yep. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. We need, I need a... You need some scissors. You're just going to fake it for the YouTube. Right? No, I'm not. I just forgot. So, uh, as we talked about before, we had some really, really, really windy, windy storms. Uh, so there's sort of a a system holding them up. When that system didn't work because of the storm, we have just used limbs to hold them up. So let me get those out. But those were for free. Yes. So for the noise. Okay. They were for, in here. for free. Yeah. It's starting to rain, so we'll get what we can done. And then, uh, yeah. This is so Denmark. Rain and sun within five minutes. Okay, so it's day two, the rain has stopped, the sun is out. Look at that beautiful sky. And we started again, the cabana banana, we've clipped it all the way down. Now we're gonna lift Just that in. tuber out of the ground. We don't have a pitchfork, so we know it's better. Just to kind of lift to... it a bit gentle, but we're going all the way around the base. Yeah. Because it's quite a big one. This one we planted from tubers. So it'll be interesting to see. Okay, that should be enough. Yeah, that's on the Christmas list. A pitchfork? That's your Christmas list. 
Let's see if we can get it up. Oh, here, here we go. go. Oh, it's wow, a big one. Shake all that. Shake all that. Oh, I don't know. Look at that. Whoa. Whoa. We got to divide that one in the spring. Oh, but look at this one. Ooh. And we're just going to really... We're going to shake it a little bit here. And then we're going to leave it either in the sunshine or somewhere dry, maybe in the shed also for a few days, so we can shake a little bit more of that excess soil. Oh, I'm out of breath now. Why don't we, while, while that one's there, these here on the edge were planted from seed. These are Bishop's children. So show this one here, Lars, that I pulled up just okay. a second ago. Uh, this one? So this one we planted from seed, but now look at those tubers. Wow. Yay! So they do, a lot of people, when they come to the garden, they ask, oh, you sown these from seeds. Do they still make bulbs or tubers? And here's the, yeah, the, you can really the see it. The proof that they do, exactly. Sorry? All right, that's proof, you're right. That's yeah. proof that they do. That's the word, I was looking for the word, yeah. <laughs> I got you, boo, I got you. So we were, we're gonna leave them, cut them down here. And then this, we know this is Bishop's Children, so we're gonna put a little, like name tag on, so when we store them, we know what variety it is. What they are for next year, exactly. All right, let's get back to work. Lots more to do. Look at those crazy stems. Isn't that crazy? This was boom, boom, white. It was so pretty. And it will be pretty again. Okay, so now... Okay, maybe I'll loosen it. Just oh to make... man, I was totally ready to introduce that happening. So flower bed, raised flower bed number two. Oh, here we go. It's really is... good soil. Can you see we, we put all that compost and so it's really Well, rich. here's why we put all that compost. First of all, dahlias love it. You can keep yeah. going. Okay. I can talk white. Don't take a break. Um, ah. yeah, so these raised beds were, were new when we sort of renovated the space back here. And we have a lot of compost, as you can see. So instead of buying a lot of soil, we packed it full of sticks and branches and leaves and then oh that's really pretty wow, that's and then packed it full of compost so we could empty our compost bin and then just a small layer of sort of topsoil look at all the worms here Ooh, i bet they're loving you like the one when i find seeds you're like every time i dig up a people need to know that every time i find a worm you're like ooh. Worms for the compost yes, so because when we find an earthworm although we'll leave it in mm -hmm. this i usually put it in our compost that's why we make such good compost here in our small little place. See, so it's okay. I love seeds. Oh, that's nice, Lars. So normally the mother tube, the one that you plant, kind of rots away, and then all these ones are new, newcomers, new tubes. New Look tube. at this one. We just shake it and yeah, get all shake and go. Shake and go. Like Look an at easy it. Wig. Looks like a potato. I think it's so crazy that this becomes a a flower like a dried potato. And it looks like a dried potato. And then you can yeah, divide them if they have eyes on it. Can't really see it now. We've got to wait for that. We'll do that in the spring anyway, yeah. not now. Because, uh, because I... <laughs> Did you become <laughs> the Dahlia expert now? Yeah, I'm totally a Dahlia mm -hmm. expert. Ta -da, I would love to be. North so. Lawn Flower Garden. Wow, she's graded all these so. tubers and stuff. And we will put a little tape on with the name on for the winter. Yeah. Perfect. Good. And so I'm going to clean all this and then take some of because uh, we have a bunch in the greenhouse. So some of the perennials we just, so they really come off the shelf so they really touch the ground. That'll be nice here over winter. Exactly. Okay. And we're stacking them here. Stacking and Lars says that they're organized. They are. Let me put it here. Ta da! Look at that sunshine coming through. <laughs> It's hitting the reflection. Okay, getting the last two. Oh, that's too nice. I don't need to yeah. go to the gym. Oh, wow, look at this soil. Just shake that off a bit. Mm -hmm. Wow. That, that is huge. Yeah, that became super huge. Jeepers. Gently shake that off, I think. Um, what are you doing over here? Collecting seeds. 
You're not collecting seeds. No, I'm collecting earthworms. Look at these. I'm like a big Ooh. kid. Ew, they are big. Well, they there's plenty in here. Mm. So, I'm going to put these oh. in the compost. Are you sure there's enough in here? Yeah. I bet they, now the plants well, that. you won't grow now because you took those. They told me I was like, is there more in here? Oh. And they were like, we're fine. Okay, great. So we finished. I'm going to just chop off the leftover pieces there. And then I'm going to put some perennials out here. Yay. Good. So we use this uh, masking tape with the name here is uh, Cabana Banana, one of our definitely favorites. So just with a, a marker, we're just going to put on a little bit above the ground here. We're just going to put the name here like that. Around, here we go. Everybody's watching. I know. You the suspense. A, I know, right? But just put it a little bit around there. And then you know the name. Trim the top here and then it's just going to have the name for next year so you don't get confused about which dela you have. Not that we really care where they go. You know, no. it's not like we're planting all yellows in one section. No. But we want to make sure this guy, because it was our favorite, we want to give him a good spot next year. Ooh, another worm. So uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to clean off some of the top of this, start mixing up some of this dirt. I'll leave some of these little guys. Um, and then Lars is bringing some of the perennials that we've had inside the glass house out here where they're going to live for the whole winter. They'll do just fine. They're really robust. This is a Montbrecha and the uh, Rollicke. Yeah, that Montbrecha is one that we actually divided um, here at the end of the summer, right behind where you're standing, ladies and gentlemen. So, yeah. So, so this is actually just going to be like a little nursery out here and because we do have a lot of seedlings in the greenhouse and then... Yeah, so I think that one looks good enough. Perfect. I'll come over here, we'll switch sides. Okay. Um, while we switch sides really awkwardly, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. This is what's going on here in November. The dahlias, we need to finish labeling them over there in a few weeks, like, we, well, not a few weeks. Hopefully if the sun stays out, we can do it by the end of the day, dust off that dirt and then get, get those guys packed up yeah. and away. So. Thanks for now. Remember to like and subscribe and let us know what's growing and what's going on in your garden, wherever you are in the world. And uh, that's it. We've got yeah. a lot to get back to. Good. So, thanks. See you soon. So we went into the greenhouse to get the perennials out and we also saw like our basil was all finished. The frost has come. So these has to go to the compost. And then in the back, I found something amazing. Look at this. Our digitalis in autumn, I was standing in here sowing them in trays, and apparently, some seeds flew off the tray and self sowed in the corner of the greenhouse. So, these I'm gonna, instead of having them clamped over there in the corner, I'm gonna repo uh, put the, place them out in the garden because the first year they will make the, the leaf, and then next year they will start to flower the digitalis. So, you, it's still time to remove some perennials, so I'll get on to that too. <gasps>